Always do your best. People say this to you to be encouraging, especially if you're worried about how something might go. If you can just do your best, it will work out. So there's really nothing to worry about. But what does it actually mean to do your best? Well, in the fall of 2017, as a new freshman at Brooks, I didn't really know. So this is me on my first day moving into my room in Gardner. Fresh out of middle school, I was so excited for a chance to restart. And like most freshmen, I wanted to put my best foot forward and make the most of my time here. I've always had a passion for learning, so my first weeks in the classrooms here, I was in awe. Mr. Hesse's honors physics class was my favorite. We learned about why and how objects move, what creates sound, and how math can explain everyday occurrences. It's like unlocking the secrets of the world, and I thought it was the coolest thing. In class, I was constantly asking Hesse to explain further or get into topics that were beyond the scope of the course. And I would never settle until I was satisfied with the derivation of every equation, the explanation of every concept. Physics brought me joy and excitement in a way I had rarely experienced in class before. It was a time where I could be curious and everything could be explained if I was willing to listen and think it through. So when the first test rolled around, I knew I wanted to do my best. But the problem was, I wasn't really sure what that meant. We're told that you can never be perfect and there's always room to do better. So how can you have this limitless potential and yet be able to do your best? There was always more I could be doing to prepare for the test, so not doing more would therefore not be my best. In the end, I probably overprepared because I scored 100% on my test. All was well in the world again until the next graded assignment came around. My favorite class slowly began to agonize me. Now that I knew what my best work could look like, it became a standard I had to live up to. I remember thinking, I know I can get everything right. I just have to study and I know I can do it. And I did over and over again. Tirelessly going over textbook problems, obsessing over every detail. Racking up perfect test after perfect test. And for what? I'm not even sure I knew. And the worst part was the scores didn't make me happy. Doing well went from something to be excited about to the expectation. Instead of wanting good grades, I was afraid of not getting them. I feared that if I didn't get the right grades, it means I'm not as smart as I thought, and then I won't succeed in college, and then I won't become what I want to be, and then you get the picture. I was facing this internal battle with myself that I could never win. And needless to say, I was really missing out on the fun opportunities in this community and on enjoying my time as a 14-year-old. Sophomore year. With a year under my belt, I thought I would be an expert as a sophomore. However, in my first weeks, I was convinced that Mr. LaFon's AP chemistry class would end my academic career. 
Once again, I became hung up on my academics. I was still holding on to this perception that my performance in school was an indicator of my intelligence and therefore determined my value. I was still missing out because I was so focused on school that I put it before other things. And looking back, there's a moment that sticks out to me that I didn't think anything of at the time. I remember sitting here in the chapel, listening to juniors talk about their experiences going on trips through the Brooks Exchange program. They were encouraging us sophomores to think about applying. It sounded really fun, but when they got down to the details, I realized that I would have to miss a couple weeks of school to do it. From that point on, I pretty much just zoned out. I thought about how I couldn't possibly do exchange because it would interfere with my classes, which would be too difficult and too stressful. It hardly even crossed my mind as an option. I never gave any thought into applying. At the time, I didn't even realize I was holding myself back from this opportunity. Now, I didn't even necessarily want to go on exchange, but it makes me wonder how many other fun things I may have turned down without even realizing it. I didn't want to be that kind of person, but yet I was. So when my junior year rolled around, I decided I really wanted things to change. I'm a very logical thinker, so I tend to approach life's challenges the way you approach a math problem, breaking them down into steps. I wanted to stress less and have more fun without feeling guilty about it. Identify the problem, check. Now I had to find the steps to solve it. So I started actually prioritizing my mental health. I gave myself permission to stay longer at dinner to talk with friends, even if it meant less time for homework. I showed up to do yoga with Mr. Griffith every time he offered it on Sundays, dropping whatever I was doing, no matter what. I finally found that sweet spot of how much to study for a test before calling it a night and getting sleep. I remember telling Mr. Hesse that maybe junior year isn't as tough as they all say, and he suggested that maybe I had just learned to handle it better. Implement the steps, check. Now I was at the bottom of my metaphorical checklist, but I couldn't check off that final box of being fixed. In a lot of ways, I was able to let go of my attachment to academic performance. But once I was able to relax about school, I realized that my distressing feelings had not gone away. And for a while, that was incredibly frustrating. There was no pivotal moment of change like I had hoped for. But instead, I learned things slowly. I learned that my emotions cannot be intellectualized. Or as Ms. Holmes would say, you can't think your way out of a feeling. I learned that gradual change requires patience, actual patience. I learned that fixing myself doesn't mean that my negative feelings are gone, and that's okay. Because over time, I can start to identify them for what they are and let go of them before they consume me. I also learned that throughout that process, it's important to celebrate the small victories and not dwell too much on the setbacks. I now have a new definition of my best, which includes two things. The first is that my best cannot exist if I only focus on one aspect of my life. 
it has to include everything, health, happiness, and having balance. It can't just be about the quantitative stuff. My best means pushing myself as much as is reasonable, given the circumstances. Sometimes that means cutting myself slack and being okay with that. The second thing is that I'm at my best when I forget about the outcome and just pursue my passions freely. For you, this might not be about academics, but it can be applied to athletics, arts, or any type of interest. Do what you love for the sake of doing it, and try not to get caught up in whether or not you're doing it well. Because in fact, sometimes that's the best way to get that good outcome you're looking for. My love of learning has always been there. And it's the reason that even though I'm into college, I just don't have it in me to senior slide. It's what draws me to ask Mr. Hesse weird science questions, like why do our reflections look upside down in a spoon? And it's why I love gathering with friends to talk about God and the universe with Mr. Nam. I wish I had known these things to begin with because I could have saved myself a lot of hurting. I was fully capable of getting here without the stress, doubt, and tears because those are not the things that help me succeed. And although you're probably expecting me to say that it was all worth it in the end and it helped me grow so much, I can't say that I'm glad it happened this way. Nevertheless, I will take with me the lessons I learned at Brooks, and I hope that you can take something away from my experience as well. I urge you to remember that your best can't be measured by a number or an outcome. Your best is a feeling of fulfillment, of pride, and you don't have to push yourself to the breaking point to get there. <laughs>